Now, once again, Raymond Arroyo. Welcome back to The World Over. My next guest is the head of one of the fastest growing Catholic populations in the world. He's Archbishop of Manila, and at 57, he's one of the youngest cardinals in the church. He served as president of the Extraordinary Synod last October. I sat down with him during his recent visit to Catholic University here in D.C. He spoke candidly about his life in the Philippines, as well as the Synod, including what became a rather significant controversy over the treatment of divorced and remarried Catholics receiving communion. On the occasion of Pope Francis's visit to the Philippines, here is an encore of my exclusive interview with Cardinal Louis Tagle. Your Eminence, I want to start with your childhood. I'm going to take you way back. Oh. What is your most vivid memory of your childhood? One of the earliest memories uh, is uh, of myself as a little boy leading uh, a whole community in praying the rosary. Wow. Yes. My parents, especially my mother, taught us how to pray the rosary. And, uh, you know, in, in my hometown, in my, uh, especially the, the street where we lived, uh, they had the custom of bringing the statue of Our Lady of Fatima from house to house, mm. you know, where uh, the family that hosts the right. image has a praying of the rosary. And uh, it's also, it also becomes a, a moment for the community to get together, to know each other, mm. and to share some food. Uh, most <laughs> and, importantly, share yes, some food in yeah, between the prayers. Yes. And uh, I was one of those little children that made a sensation because we could lead the, ah. the, the, the rosary. So I remember being invited from house to house to lead the rosary. Yeah. Tell me as you look back, you mentioned your mother. Yes. As you look back at Manuel and Milagros, your mother, yes, yes. what of their personality traits do you see in your own ministry today? I guess all of us, as we grow, yes. we begin to see shades of our parents. I know. What do you see in your personality and in your work today yeah. that bears the mark of your parents? One is both of them are hardworking. Mm. I don't think the word rest huh exists in their dictionary, <laughs> and I see that <laughs> present in me. Yeah. Also, patience and perseverance. Huh. You know, my parents went through hard times. They were both teenagers during the Second World War. Mm. They saw a lot of destruction, and, uh, they, but they also saw a lot of determination, how mm. to rise from ruins and rubble. Yeah. From them, I also saw the the beauty of simple faith and uh, simple prayer, mm -hmm. you know, uh, they, they're not as pious as other people would be, mm -hmm. but they are very religious. Mm -hmm. Their faith is strong, you know, they, uh, they know that the sun will rise, they know that there is a God, there is Our Lady who would always be with us. And I see that whenever I, I find myself in difficult situations, especially when I'm confronted with a decision to mm -hmm. make, and things are not always clear, yeah. and I feel the weight of the responsibility, then I know, you know, as my parents believed in a God who will make things work for the good of all, then I say, just relax, mm. have faith, yeah. have faith. Yeah. Yes. I love it. Well, we see that certainly in your work and in your ministry before coming to Manila and now. Now, I, I, someone told me the other day, who, who is a, knows you, uh -huh. that you prefer to go by Chito, yes. your nickname. Yes. Why? Well, my, my, my real name is Luis. Right. And uh, the diminutive is Luisito, the ah, small Luis. Little Luis. Yes. And uh, it's a custom in the Philippines uh, often to forget the real name and to cling to the diminutive. <laughs> so <laughs> the Luis has been dropped and the Cito. Uh, and the so Cito has taken hold. <laughs> yes, yes. And so many people are surprised that I'm named Luis, that my real name is Luis. So it's a, it's a name that is known to friends, mm -hmm. known to people who 
who are at home with me or at ease with me, or and I always say, people who like me prefer to call me Chito. <laughs> the others don't worry about <laughs> no, them. It doesn't Just like matter. grandparents, no? <laughs> when uh, they get mad at you, they call you by your formal name, That's the right. full name, <laughs> Luis Antonio. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Chito is actually Chito is a, a blessing yes, at that point. Yes. I wanted to, we are here at Catholic University yes, of America, yes. where you had spent a lot of time. Yes, you more got, than six years. That's right, you got your doctrinal, did your doc doctrinal work here yeah. in sacred theology. Yes. Um, what is it like being back here? And what did you take? I mean, you're a man of the Southern Hemisphere. Yes. Uh, yet you've spent a sizable amount of time here in yeah. Rome. What did you take from this experience, being uh, here in America? No, it was, uh, first of all, I, I did not plan on going to further studies. When my bishop called me after ordination to the priesthood that I would one day, maybe after three years of pastoral ministry in the Philippines, mm -hmm. be sent to further studies, I objected. I said, enough of Wait studies. Wait a minute. <laughs> I said, no, no, I said, I'm, uh, I, I'm not interested anymore. I've had so many years of studies, but it was a mission sent, uh, to be sent to study. Mm -hmm. And I pleaded with him if I could just pursue my master's and doctorate in the Philippines. You know, and he said, no, it would be good to uh, go to uh, some other place. And uh, I, I experienced a widening of horizon. Huh. That's one thing. Uh, in, in my own person, you know, uh, I felt like I understood myself better as a Filipino. I understood the faith better and the richness of the Catholic tradition. Mm. I saw how uh, a church like the church in the United States grapples with uh, mm. concerns that I don't, uh, I did not fully understand at that time. Mm. You know? But it expanded my, my, my perspective mm -hmm. and I'm very happy that I studied uh, the Second Vatican Council Yes, I focused on Pope Paul VI. And his collegiality. collegiality. This question of collegiality and mm -hmm. Paul VI, yeah. soon to be blessed yes. uh, uh, Paul VI, how does that vision of collegiality compare with what we're seeing under Pope Francis? Mm -hmm. I think Pope Francis is taking it seriously. Mm. This collegiality is really communion. The communion within the universal church. What does that mean? Explain it to people who don't understand this Communion, concept. I think, uh, can be explained this way. Uh, on, on an objective level, wherever you find the church, there are common elements mm -hmm. that we hold together. So in common communion, yeah. like, of course, we have the one God, the same That's God, right. the same Holy Spirit, the same baptism, mm -hmm. the same Word of God, the same Eucharist, the same apostolic ministry, the same call to mission. So I may be in India, I may be in Bangladesh, I may be in Germany, and it's the same Word of God mm -hmm. that, is, uh, mm -hmm. that is proclaimed. It's the same baptism, it's the same Eucharist. Yeah. So on, the, uh, on that level, we are one community, yeah. Yeah. but also on the uh, more subjective level mm -hmm. and on the structural level also, there are avenues for us to be brothers and sisters and for us bishops to be co-responsible hmm. with and for each other. There is no church that I can consider or should consider as alien to me. I should not say, I am the Archbishop of Manila, mm. and so my concern is only Manila. Mm -hmm. Washington, D.C., oh, mm. no, that's far too far away from us, from our concerns, no. You know, because of collegiality, I, I consider every bishop as my brother. We belong to one community mm. of bishops, and I will try to do my best in Manila not only for my sake and for the sake of the Archdiocese of Manila, but for the sake of all my brother bishops. Mm. And their concerns are my concerns too. Like uh, I'm very much worried uh, when the kidnapping of these girls in Nigeria yeah. happened mm -hmm. and uh, it's so it, uh, uh, providentially 
the secretary of the Apostolic Noon Show in Manila is from Nigeria. Ah. So I asked him, no, so how is Cardinal so-and-so? Yeah. This must be bearing hard on him, so heavily on him. Well, no. mm -hmm. So uh, this, this opens up for me a whole vista of uh, mm -hmm. ministry also, mm -hmm. not uh, for individual gain. Uh, how does this factor into decision-making? And do you see a shift in Pope Francis's approach as opposed to that of his predecessors? No, not, not really. Uh, uh, pope Francis, as a new pope, you know, the, the first year that I've inter interacted with him, has been uh, very much interested in knowing firsthand what is happening in mm -hmm. the local churches. Mm -hmm. And that is in order to strengthen the role of the Church of Rome mm -hmm. as the center of charity and communion. Mm -hmm. So paying attention to the local realities does not negate the role of the center. Uh -huh. It will enhance the role of the center, mm. it, which is to make love, charity, mm. special, special missionary charity circulate. I want to talk about that because you and your church are so responsible for exporting priests yes. to Europe, to the United States, States, to a lot of the Northern Hemisphere. Yes. Uh, you have 7,000 priests roughly in, yes, in, in uh, the Philippines. In the Philippines you have 85 million Catholics. <laughs> yes. Is there a crisis going on? I mean, yeah. I know it's a circulation of yeah, love by love, sending your, yes. your, your best and brightest yes. to other countries, but are you facing something of a crisis internally? Well, we, uh, that has always been the situation, by the way. We have been used to having one priest for a big, big parish. Mm -hmm. So in terms of crisis, if it is a crisis, then we, are, we have gotten used to the yeah, crisis. It's, a, it's, it's not commonplace new. now. Yeah, it's commonplace. It's commonplace. Yeah. And uh, I think what saves us, though, is the fact that many of our priests are relatively young, mm. you know, and uh, there is great participation on the part of the lay people. Mm. And, and that lessens a lot of the uh, concerns and the, also the weight. Yeah. No, of ministry no, uh, handled by the priests. You, in your previous position, when you were uh, the bishop mm -hmm. of uh, Imus. Imus, you quadrupled, uh, <laughs> doubled, uh, expanded vocations by an incredible number. Something, what was it, 27? And then you, yeah, you, you yeah. took it up to 140-something yeah. priests, 143 yeah. priests. How was that possible? How did you do that? Well, I, I don't know. I, oh, uh, I, I did not plan on that. It's just that the fact that uh, the, 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 the diocese became a favorite destination of internal migrants, ah. people from other parts of the country looking for jobs. Mm. And, and that part of the Philippines uh, is pr blessed you know, with, with, with jobs, with uh, opportunities, and so many people went there. And this is one thing good about migrants. When they're uprooted from their places of origin, they look for home. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next best home for them is the parish, mm. the church. And I see that not only internally in the Philippines, right. but also externally. That's why Filipino migrant workers, you know, in Europe especially, they are the ones who keep the churches filled and alive. Mm -hmm. I celebrated Mass in the Duomo, in the Cathedral of Milan. Uh, Cardinal Scola invited mm -hmm. me for some conferences, and he scheduled a Mass on a Sunday for the Filipino community, uh, predominantly for them, mm -hmm. no? but it's not only for them. Right, no? right. You know, 20,000 oh attended. 20,000 Filipinos attended. My goodness. And... Uh, I thought the, the, the Duomo was packed. And after the Mass, uh, the Master of Ceremony said, you might want to greet the people who were not able to enter. So I said, sure. So we did this procession. When I got to the door of the, of the Duomo, I almost fainted. Because uh -huh. the whole piazza and the streets were filled. around were filled 
with another 11,000 Filipinos screaming, uh, oh, asking for a blessing. And the, uh, one of the, uh, the, the canons of the cathedral said, look, your eminence, this is the future of the church here mm. in Milan. Mm. I said, no, not just the future. They are the present. The present, yes. <laughs> it exactly. is now. Exactly. Is Look now. at them. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And that happened in, our di in my former diocese. Mm -hmm. There was a, an influx of migrants. Mm -hmm. They come to church. They feel at home in church. And their children. And there's a yeah. vibrancy there yeah. in their practice. And then before you know it, these young uh, uh, gentlemen are asking, what can we do to be of help? Mm -hmm. How do I enter the seminary? And, and you we, had an idea or two for them. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I also made sure, maybe this is my contribution. Whenever there are big feasts, mm -hmm. patronal feasts, confirmation, uh, I always include in my homilies. Mm. You know, sometimes in the form of a joke. You know, uh, I always remind people, especially the young, to consider the vocation to the priestly life and religious life as one of the options open to them. Mm. Uh, I want to talk about some of the difficulties and challenges we're facing, not only in your local church, yeah. but universal. There was a reproductive health law yes. that you fought vigorously against, yeah. I know, because what it requires is the government to yeah. provide contraceptives yeah. Yeah. all over the country. Yes. You opposed it. It's now on hold, I believe. Oh. Uh, but. It has passed. Yes, it has passed. Yes, yes. There were a few of mm -hmm. your confreres, uh -huh. bishops, who wished or threatened to excommunicate some of the politicians involved uh -huh. and even the president. You did not agree with that. Why not? Yeah. Well, first of all, uh, I am very cautious about language, the language of excommunication. Because uh, the church is primarily a sacrament of salvation mm -hmm. and not of damnation. Yeah, right. yeah. So we, uh, I believe, uh, excommunication happens in ex in a very strict circumstances, and uh, uh, and you have to judge levels of culpability on a personal level. Right. So uh, having, uh, but that, but you know. In fact, when that was clarified, the bishops, the bishops who were alleged mm -hmm. to have been uh, part of that pronouncement, mm -hmm. they were surprised because they said that in their interviews they did not threaten anyone. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they were asked. You no, know, some of them were asked. Uh, isn't abortion a cause uh, or a reason for excommunication? And they they explained how some contraceptives are abortifacients, you know? Uh, so it, it's, it's in that context. So it's mm -hmm. not a blanket, you know, threat to, uh, to uh, supporters of the, of the law. Now, Pope Francis recently appointed you as one of the co-presidents of this upcoming yes. synod, a very important synod on the family, yes. taking place in Rome this fall, yes. and it'll continue into the next year. This next year. You have been quoted in interviews most recently in the Boston Globe, uh, as saying you are open to hearing arguments as to uh, whether Catholics can be divorced and remarried without annulments. Why? I was quoted as saying John that. Allen quotes you as saying oh. that you were open to arguments where uh, a Catholic okay. might be ca uh, married, really? divorced and remarried uh -huh. without an annulment. Are you? Oh, I, you know, uh, I don't recall, uh, I don't recall the, the conversation focusing on that, no. Mm -hmm. What I recall of the conversation is this, that uh, we, when, when we had this converse, that, that conversation, uh, we just came from the consistory uh -huh. where Cardinal Casper right. uh, gave a whole uh, presentation. Right. And the discussion that ensued, you know, opened for me personally, a whole range of uh, a whole range of concerns and issues that I was ignorant of. Mm -hmm. So I said, "Wow, there's so much to learn, yeah. especially now that I'm a, a president delegate." Yes. No, so I am open to all the perspectives that could help us shed mm -hmm. light on the issue. Do, do you think, with your study and your understanding okay. of theology, certainly far uh -huh. surpassing mine? Uh, <laughs> 
is it possible to f envision mm -hmm. a policy that would allow Catholics to divorce and remarry without an annulment, given the church teaching and Christ's teaching on yeah. the indissolubility of marriage? Is it possible? I just came from a meeting of uh, uh, the preparatory committee mm -hmm. for the synod. Thing, this, the following things are very clear. The teaching of Jesus and the teaching of the church will not be changed. You know? What people are looking at right now, especially the canonists, mm -hmm. is this. You know? uh, how could canon law, how could canon law and its procedures you know, reflect more clearly you no, know, the teaching of Jesus Christ, you know, yeah. and the teaching of the church, because some some people are claiming that the canonical procedures mm -hmm. are, uh, too are too rigid, and uh, also mm -hmm. some are even asking, uh, the, do the canonical prescriptions uh, are they clear about the doctrinal? Mm -hmm. basis mm -hmm. or is the legal canonical path taking its own way uh, quite separately from ah. the doctrinal uh, dimension I no see. the other thing is uh, it also became quite clear that every let's call it failed marriage mm -hmm. is quite unique mm -hmm. you 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 uh, it's difficult to say all mm -hmm. no uh, marriages that ended up in divorce, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the, because when you when you deal with cases and you deal with with, with persons, individual, individual lives, individual lives sure. then you have to. Uh, but that's the to annulment see. process, yes, correct? That's I mean, that's why you have process. the annulment process. Yes, so is yes. that what the focus of this is? Reforming the annulment, annulment process? process. That that has become a big, big. Uh, mm -hmm. point. So doctrinally. How can you change the word of the Bible or the words of Jesus? No. But Cardinal but Casper seems to be suggesting something akin to that, though. In that presentation, which I know was hostily received by a lot of the cardinals present. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, no, but, but he, he responded to that. Yes. He said uh, he was talking there as a theologian mm -hmm. who, who did a lot of uh, historical... In fact, in the Analysis, meeting yester yeah. yesterday, there was another perspective that came up. You know? The, uh, canonical tradition of the Eastern Rite churches. Right. You know, right. how they handle so-called uh, divorces and second marriages. But uh -huh. of course, the, the Synod will not focus only on this uh, yes. situation. Well, we see it, it's the media coverage of this seems yeah. to focus on... Uh, and For example, in the Philippines, we don't have divorce. Right. Uh -huh. uh, so well, if we, if the whole synod is uh, about divorce and you need to get people, off the president's said, council, oh, <laughs> maybe just call a, a synod for countries with uh, yeah, with exactly. divorce. No, but we have families where the the couples are are separated not because they're they're they they don't want to live with one another, but they're de facto separated by poverty, mm -hmm. by migration. Mm -hmm. It's not anger towards one another that made them decide to separate, mm. but it is the love for each other and for the children. Yeah. You know, that's a totally different situation. Are you concerned that a combination of certain individuals and the media are hijacking this synod and changing it into something it was never envisioned to be? That's always a, that's always a, a, a danger, you know, because. Uh, uh, People uh, have their own interests and they have their own agenda, you know. So they they express in their form of reporting uh, some sort of uh, a support you know, mm -hmm. for for their uh, agenda, you know. But I sit on the preparatory committee of the synod, and I tell you, the communion of the divorced uh, re remarried is just one item among many, 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 many items. Mm -hmm. There are at least eight major topics, and that is just one. Mm -hmm. And they always say this is a, a North Atlantic, <laughs> exactly <laughs> North Atlantic concern. Yeah. And when you go to Africa, when you go to Asia, you no. Know, and and for us, for example, because of migration, yeah. you know, uh, the the fabric of of, of the family mm -hmm. is really tested, mm -hmm. and so we are asking for serious pastoral care 
for migrants so that they could remain faithful to their spouses left at home or to their children. I, I want to wrap up here. Yeah. So many people during the last conclave stopped uh -huh. me on the street, uh -huh. especially one young man whom you met in passing. You may not even remember this. Mm -hmm. He felt he had a calling to the priesthood. He asked, I think, to come speak with you for a moment. You were crossing the piazza, uh -huh. and you sat with him and spoke to him for 20 minutes or so. And he enthusiastically told me about this moment, this encounter with you. Really? Uh -huh. And he said he felt it was decisive in his considering this vocation seriously and almost a message, a uh -huh. message for him personally. Yeah. How aware are you of those moments? And do you go out of your way to make uh -huh. time for people you encounter? I'm sure you were on your way to something else at that <laughs> time. Yeah, I I usually try to stop you know, when people uh, want to ask questions, and if if the questions are are uh, really essential or, mm -hmm. or important, then I, I I give them time. People say you are the Asian Pope Francis. Oh my, <laughs> Pope Francis is Pope Francis. How do you I, react to that? <laughs> I smile. I don't. <laughs> I don't take it seriously. I mean, I know Pope Francis. We worked together for three years mm -hmm. in uh, the uh, the Council of the Synod. Ah. You know, he is his person. I am not. I am not him. But uh, if there are, there are. Uh, I, I worked longer with Cardinal Ratzinger, and I, uh, yeah. So <laughs> well, uh, I think what they're talking about is your way of life. You you lead a simple way of life. You, mm -hmm. you, you are mingling with the public, you're available yeah. to people. One yeah. can look at your face and see the joy yeah. of your faith. Um, I think that's what they're yeah, saying. Maybe that. Well, if, if it is that, then I'm happy. That. Well, good. Well, we're happy too. Your Eminence, thank you so much for your oh, time. Thank you, Raymond. Thank you. Thank you.